State may call their next witness. Your Honor, State will call Andrea Bowling. I swear the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Please have a seat. And ma'am, we do have media in the courtroom this afternoon. Do you have any objection to your image being filmed or photographed during your testimony? No objection. Stephen, you may inquire. Thank you. Ma'am, would you state your name for the record? And how do you spell your last name? B-O-W-L-I-N-G. Thank you. How are you employed? I'm a teacher. Where are you a teacher at? Menford Elementary School. How long have you been a teacher? 18 years. In that time as a teacher, what age groups have you taught? Second grade for 10 years and third grade for eight years. In your time at uh, Teaching has, has that been all in Scioto County? Yes, all at Menford. All at Menford? Menford Elementary. How has teaching evolved in Scioto County over those 20 years? How, I'm sorry. How has teaching evolved in Scioto County over those 20 years? How has teaching evolved in Scioto County? Yeah. Are the kids any different these days or? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, from when I first started, yeah, you, there's a big difference in, in kids and their home dynamic and okay. sometimes behavior. Um, have, what, what kind of differences have there been? Uh, since the drug epidemic, you, there's been a lot more um, children with uh, being raised by grandparents and um, or, uh, you know, their family. Um, is just kind of suffering and and they're having difficulties at home due to the due to dr mainly drugs and um, they need a lot more emotional support and um, compassion and help from teachers. So your duties at school have expanded from just the normal two plus two, I'd say. Oh, absolutely, yes. Now it's my understanding that you've been a foster parent. You need to answer out loud for us. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Yes. And when did you become a foster parent? Um, I was certified in t July of 2017. And what process do you go through to become a foster parent? Uh, we have to take um, classes that train us, 40 hours of classes that train us about different um, things that we need to know as far as kids that might come into the system that we would be taking care of. And um, we have to have drug tests, um, medical physicals, uh, home inspection, um, home studies, anyone in the home has to take a drug test and also have medical physicals. Um, there's a lot to it. There's um, the there fire department had to come out and inspect the house to make sure it was safe. Um, yeah, there's okay. a lot of a lot of things. Are there, there different types of foster parents that a person can become? I'm sorry. Are there different types of foster care that can be provided or training for for foster parents? Yes. There's and um, are there different types of foster care? Yes. Yes, you can be trained completely to just foster, or you can be trained to foster to adopt. You can be trained for medically fragile foster children. What, what type of training did you receive? I, I received the foster to adopt training. And why did you receive the foster to adopt training? Um, when I first decided to become a foster parent, I um, was just planning on fostering. Um, I'm 41 years old. I've raised a son who's now in college. And I was just planning on fostering. And um, as I 
was starting to get all of the paperwork, all we had to have BCI and federal background checks too. Um, as we got all of our paperwork together, um, Children's Services said, you know, you may want to consider foster to adopt. It's just a few more hours and, you know, if you don't get it tacked in, into this, you know, you may wish you did later. And I said, okay, you know, yeah, I'll do that. So I went ahead and did foster to adopt. Okay. Seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, before we uh, get to January of 2019, um, had you had uh, previous foster children? Yes. I had two, a six and seven year old, um, and I had them for a year and four months okay. before they were reunited. Okay. And uh, prior to January of 2019, had you ever had an infant before? Uh, a foster care infant? No. Okay. I mean, I'd raised my son. Certainly as a mother, you've had <laughs> right. an infant. Right, yeah. So. I'd like to direct your attention now to January of 2019. Okay. Uh, what happened in January of that year? Okay, so the two foster children that I had um, previously, they were reunited in November of 2018. So I went December and then part of January before I got a phone call, and then I was te teaching, sorry, that's what it is. I was teaching, um, getting ready to, to do attendance, and I got a phone call from Children's Services, and they said, we have a baby that <coughs> needs to be um, in foster care. Would you be willing to go pick him up later? And I, I said, um, Yes. Yeah, I will do that. And I said, I'm teaching today, um, and I need to go get some clothes and diapers, and um, then I will go pick them up around 6. Would that be okay? And they said, Let, we'll call the hospital, and they did, and they got back with me, and that was okay. And so I ended up picking, going down there at 6 o'clock. Okay. If you would just, I, I can hear you, but if you can, and I know. You can't it's, hear me? If you can speak up a little bit more. Okay. Am I? Is it a microphone right here? That's a microphone there, but it's not a broadcast microphone. It's just a recording microphone. Okay, I'll talk louder. Yeah. yeah. You're a teacher. I know you can. I'll use that voice. Okay. Uh, did you have anything to prepare for um, fostering an infant? Did I have anything to prepare was for? It, was there anything you needed to do before? Uh, you said you had to go get diapers, but was your yeah. house ready for an infant at right. that time? Right. I had from where I had my previous foster son, I had a room that was vacant. Um, my cousin uh, gave me the crib for Dylan. Um, and then I had a rocker recliner upstairs that I brought down so I could rock him. And then a friend of mine from church gave me a mamaroo, which is a... It's a device like what they have at the hospital, which is kind of like a high-tech saucer type thing that rocks the babies um, and soothes them. And so we had one of those brought to the house and just I have a really good support system of friends and family and it was just like clothes were coming in and, and uh, it was almost immediate. I had everything I needed for him. Seems like there was this mad scramble from your community of friends to... It was, yes. It was... A mad scramble, and then, then we had a, a room that was perfect for him. Um, so, were you were you advised of any uh, potential medical condition that Dylan had um, in this call to children from Children's Services? Yes. What was your understanding of uh, what you might might be dealing with? Um, they told me that he was born with drugs in his system. And that he was withdrawing, and that he was um, at that time he was five pounds four ounces, so he was really tiny. Um, that's basically what they told me. Okay. Um, so you mentioned you got to the hospital around six o'clock. 
Yes, around uh, 6, 6.30. What hospital was that? SOMC. Okay. And once you got to the hospital, what, what did you do? Okay, so went to the, um, the nursery there at the hospital and uh, met with the nurses. They let me in, and then I went through some training on how to, what signs to look for with a baby that's withdrawing and um, how to take care of a, a baby that is, um, you know, has, has been born with drugs in his system and, and you know, uh, for several hours, different types of training for how to take care of him. And then they had to do a car seat test with him because he was so small to make sure he could sit in a car seat. Um, and his, they checked his oxygen um, as he was sitting there for an hour. They had different things hooked up to him. So I watched him do that. And then um, after the car seat test, we, that's when we were ready to go home. Okay. And... Um what, what kind of vocational plans had you made initially when, when you were going to go home with Dylan? What kind of, I'm sorry, I can't. What kind of job plans? Did you have work that you had to go to? Or? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm a teacher, so I, this was midweek that I got Dylan, and um, I didn't want to leave him with a babysitter or, or daycare, so I took, took 12 days off that I had him. I was going to take more. Next question. Thank you, Ron. Um, you mentioned before that uh, you were advised that uh, uh, that uh, baby Dylan may have some. Um, some symptoms associated with, with drug withdrawal? Yes. Okay. Um, did, you, did you observe any of these symptoms while he was in your care? Yes. What did you observe? He had tremors or his arms would shake. Okay. And his legs would jerk. <laughs> he had sweats. And he liked to be held at all times when he wasn't asleep or... In his mama room, I was holding him. We'll take a recess. But. Okay, I'll get myself together. Let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess at this point. 
Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, remember my earlier admonition to you, do not discuss this case amongst yourselves or with anyone else, do not permit anyone to discuss it with you or in your presence as your duty not to form or express an opinion on this case until it's finally submitted to you. Ms. Bowling, I am going to uh, direct you not to discuss the substance of your testimony with anyone until you're back in the stand and until you include your testimony. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Take a short recess. Mr. Bryant, if you could also make sure the other juror in the hall in the restroom makes it down to the jury room. Court's yes, recess. Please be seated. Back on the record, the state of Ohio versus Daniel Groves, state of Ohio versus Jessica Groves, 19 CR 586 A and B. Is the state ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Defense ready to proceed. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Teeman, you may continue your uh, inquiry. Thank you, Your Honor. Ma'am, during your time with uh, baby Dylan, did you uh, remain in contact with Children's Services? During my time that I had Dylan? Yes. Yes. Okay. And uh, were you responsible for taking him to see a pediatrician a few times? Yes. I okay. took him to Dr. Ali. Dr. Ali out of uh, Waverly? Okay. Um, in the time that you had Dylan, did he suffer any physical injuries? Any physical injuries? No. Yes. Okay. I'd like to direct your attention to a uh, family team meeting at Children's Services Board. Uh, do you recall being part of a family team meeting? Yes. Uh, do. do you recall the date of that? The date of that? Um, okay, so it was January 25th, I believe. Okay, 24th or 25th, somewhere yeah, in there? Somewhere right okay. there, yeah. And um, that was followed by a um, a visitation with the parents, is that right? Right, yes. Okay. I met the, I met Dylan's parents and then they Okay, Daniel and Jessica him. Groves? Yes. Okay. Um, and then they visited with him for an hour. Okay. Um, were you part of that visitation? Um, I talked to, the, to them before, um, before I left the room, but no, it was their time to spend with him. Okay. Approximately how long had you talked with them? Probably about five minutes. Okay. Did you have an opportunity in that five minutes to observe uh, the demeanor of the parents? Yes. Uh, what was Jessica's demeanor at at the time? Um, I felt like there was a possibility that she was under the influence of something. At that time. Okay. Well, let me let me see what your knowledge is of that kind of thing. Okay. So, um, as a school teacher, how many years of experience have you had teaching? Eighteen. Uh, in that eighteen years of experience, have you had um, occasion to um, run into people or deal with people that are under the influence of substances? Yes. Okay. Uh, approximately how many times? Have I seen someone intoxicated or? Yeah. Under the inputs of drugs. Ten. Okay. Ten times maybe? Yeah. Is that in the last few years or is that over your entire career? Um probably in the last I don't know, five, six years. Okay. And in your experience just being a citizen and, and, and growing up here and, and observing people on the streets, has, have you had experience with that as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. What kind of behavior was um, Mrs. Groves exhibiting? Um, she was kind of flailing her arms around and she was really happy and excited and um, more, more giddy than happy. Um, okay. Now, is it fair to say that people are sometimes like that when they're happy? Mm -hmm. What made you think this was something not normal? Just under the circumstances, it was it was um, kind of 
unexpected behavior to walk into children's services with the baby and um, and then to just see that, you know, she was, I just felt she was under the influence of something at that okay. time. Now, uh, what kind of demeanor did you see from uh, Mr. Groves? He was quiet. I didn't suspect anything as far as him being under the influence of anything. Okay. With regard to their demeanor, did you express some concerns to Children's Services? Yes. Okay. I asked if they would drug test. Okay. At some point, um, were you advised that Dylan was going to be placed back with his parents? I assumed he would be eventually. Not in 12 days, but eventually. Okay. When were you advised that he was going to be placed back? Was it at that meeting or shortly thereafter? No, it wasn't at that meeting. Um, I believe the meeting was on a Wednesday, and it was the, the, the Friday after that Wednesday. Um, I had actually called Children's Services to find out when our next visit was going to be, because normally you have a weekly visit. And I was just calling to find out when our next visit was going to be so that I could you know, just have it on my schedule. Okay. And then they informed me that he was going to be reunited and to have him at the office that following Monday morning. Okay. Now, that following Monday, would that have been the 28th? Yes, yeah, it was okay. the 28th. And were you part of the actual transition or exchange back to the family? Yes. Uh, Daniel was there to pick up Dylan. Um, when did he arrive? Okay, so I was there at 9, and he got there about 9.15. Okay. And uh, how was his demeanor then? The same. The same as the first time I met him. Okay. And um, what happened during that exchange? Um, we, uh, he brought in a car seat for Dylan, and um, I was getting Dylan's belongings together. What, uh, what, what did you do with those belongings? Uh, I gave them to Daniel. Okay. And I gave him um, go ahead. some formula, diapers, his blanket, his quilt from the hospital, some pictures. I gave him a Bible. Okay. Now, I'm going to hand you what have been marked as states exhibits 23, 22 and 23. Showing these to the council. What's been marked as State's Exhibit 22? Do you recognize this item? Yes. Okay. What is this? It's actually a picture of a picture, but what is it? It's a picture of Dylan that I that I took. Okay. Is that one of the pictures you gave to? Yes. Okay. So State's Exhibit 23. Do you recognize that? Yes. What is it? Another picture of Dylan. Okay. Is that a picture you took as well? Yeah. Exhibit 22, Your Honor. For the jury's view. State's Exhibit 23. For the jury's view. The record reflections identified those as Dylan Grove. Did you provide Daniel with anything else besides the? Um, 
I gave him a letter to him and Jessica. Okay. And uh, did you provide your number or anything like that? I did. I just basically in the letter said that how much I loved Dylan, cared about him, and that I just wanted to be maybe, you know, if I could be involved or um, to have him maybe just let me know about some milestones that he reaches. Did you, uh, did you offer to help if they were needing help? I did. Help? I said, if you ever need anything, to call me, and I gave him my phone number. Did they ever reach out to you after that? No. Is Daniel Groves in the courtroom here today? Yes. Could you point him out for the court? He's over there. Over there. Is Jessica <laughs> Groves in the courtroom here today? She's standing over there. Your Honor, if they so record, so reflect. Record will reflect the witnesses pointed to and identified with the defendants, Daniel Groves and Jessica Groves. Thank you, ma'am. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Tabor. Mr. Stratton, you may cross-examine. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Mrs. Rowling. Good afternoon. Um, you mentioned that you're a teacher out of Memphis. Right. Okay. You mentioned that over the years that you have taught that you have seen our drug problem firsthand. Right. You've seen it in the kids, the um, yes. way they're dealing with stuff and how they act in class. Yeah, the effects of different things, yes, with that. Okay. I'm guessing some of that had to do with why you became a foster parent. It is, yes. I had a couple of foster kids in my room, and they kind of brought me to the decision of becoming a foster parent. Okay. Um, earlier, you mentioned that when you took Dylan as a foster kid, that you heard, got a crib and stuff from different places. Yeah. Let me ask you. How much, as a foster parent, are you out of pocket that you spend on your own? Oh, a lot. <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Does Children's Services reimburse you for every bit of that? That we get for buying things for them? Yeah, let's say you, you said you got a crib or diapers or stuff like that. Do they reimburse you for all that, everything that you spend? No. No, okay. As a foster to adopt, you understand that Children's Services tries to reunify with the family. Right. Okay. And you've had that happen in the past? Right. And with this case, correct? Correct. Okay. And it is hard, I'm sure. It is hard. You okay. get attached. You get attached. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when Dylan was returned, and let me correct something. Earlier, I think you said that the family team meeting on what was on January 25th. I think it was the 24th. Okay. Might have yeah, been. Yeah. 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 I think that's what that's what Patricia Kraft earlier testified to. Okay, that was on the 24th. 24th. I think you called on the 25th back. Okay. To, to make your comments to Children's Services on the 25th. On the 25th. Yeah. Okay. Um, when you, so you had the team meeting on the 24th. Okay. During or after that team meeting, did you make any comments to Children's Services about? Raise your question, please. Yes, Your Honor. Mrs. Bowling, um, when you made a phone call to Children's Services, you had a couple comments about Jessica Groves specifically. What were those comments? I felt like she was under the influence of something. I oh. felt like she was high on something. But you didn't mention that on the day of the family team meeting, did you? I did. I called after the team meeting. Okay. There's, are you surprised that there is no record of you calling after the team meeting on the 24th? Am I surprised? No. Okay. Why are you not surprised? I'm just not. <laughs> okay. Does CPS, Children's Services, listen to you often? Your Honor, we approach. Mr. Stratton, 
to any more specific requests? Okay. Well, let me be more specific on this issue here. Um, you knew that Dylan was going to be returned to the father. Right. You objected to that, correct? I, I didn't feel like 12 days was long enough. Yes, okay. I disagreed okay. with that. All right, we'll leave it there. Is it fair to say, Ms. Bowling, that without people like you, as a foster parent, foster to adopt, that our system with children's services would not function? Is that fair to say? That children's services wouldn't function if there weren't foster parents? Yes. Right, yeah. Okay. And that is because of people like you who are willing to take in children that we're able to take care of drug addicted babies. Right. No further questions, Bob. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. Scott, you may cross examine the witness. Good afternoon. You are a foster parent. You are not an employee of the Children's Services, Sutter County Children's Services Board, are you? An employee? Yeah, you're not an employee. No. Okay. I'm a foster um, parent. You're a foster parent, correct. And um, is it fair to say that um, it is the agency um, and the agency's um, decision um, and the guidelines that they must follow that dictate um, the reunification standards. Is that correct? It is their decision, not mine. Okay. And um, that they were the ones, although you were a participant in the team meeting, um, it is their when decision. I say the team meeting was just me meeting Daniel and Jessica and then okay. them visiting with Dylan. Okay. That was the so there meeting. was no discussion. No at that time in regards to what was to be accomplished no by plan, the parents nothing. right or anything like that was involved in no, that meeting it was just at all. meeting each other okay great i'm glad you cleared that up um but you do agree at the end of the day it is the agency and the standards that they set and the guidelines that they must follow is what led to dylan being placed back with daniel gross Right, it wasn't definitely not my decision. Okay, thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Scott. Any redirect? No, Your Honor. Thank you, Ms. Bowling. Is this witness excused? Excused. She is, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Teeman? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, she's not sat in during the trial. Is there any thought that she'll be recalled to testify? You don't need to make that decision now, counsel. I'll let you. Your Honor, we don't anticipate calling Mrs. Ms. Bowling back to testify if she's so inclined to uh, witness any of the trial. It's, uh, we have no objection. Ms. Scott, Mr. Shred? I do not. You want to approach? No, no, we can address it. Oh, um, I do not anticipate calling her as a witness um, in our case in chief, Your Honor. So. I would have no objection. Is there any objection to me releasing her from the earlier separation order if she no. chooses to sit in? No, Your Honor, there's no objection. No objection. And you can step out. You're certainly welcome to sit in if you wish. You're certainly not required to. Mr. Teeman, you may call your next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. 